Good morning and welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of Chris Cast. This is Chris Abraham and it is 0754 AM on June the 15th. And I just finished watching Last Week Tonight with John Oliver and that was on June... Uh, June, did I say June? June 14th. And um, it was about face rec- facial recognition. And I have a lot to say about that. So stay tuned and we'll talk about facial recognition. And in the context of Black Lives Matter um, protests and riots and Um, something that when I was young, even though I didn't do it, was called flushing the grouse, flushing the grouse. Stay tuned. So while not everybody has HBO or HBO Max, uh, last week tonight with John Oliver is always awesome. Although my conservative friends think that he is a cherry picker. I think he always does deep dives in ways that uh, a native born son of America can never get right. I always think it takes the insight of an, of a, um, of a, um, uh, of a foreigner or, uh, a, um, uh, an Auslander or if you will, a, um, a stranger in a strange land to actually get this country right. Now, I haven't been saying this much, but I've been really interested in letting people know who are deciding to be part of the Black Lives Matter global protest. I'd like them to just realize that every action is a reaction. I encourage throwing your bricks, throwing your Molotov cocktails, really getting, leaning into revolution. You know, I'm totally uh, in favor of that with the understanding that you're really putting yourself out there with or without uh, your, um, with or without your, uh, your mask, because this is a time of coronavirus. And I just want to let you know that we live, we don't live in 1968. We don't, even in, even in the 60s and 50s, um, the FBI was really amazing at keeping uh, files on people. And everybody who is photographable, not recognizable, photographable during these times of protest, whether it's uh, the pussy protests on the day after the president was elected through um, um, Me Too movement, especially through uh, the riots and the opportunistic um, root looting that happened uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, these things are going to be used um, to possibly uh, prevent you from getting a job. Possibly in the same way that any photos that are taken of people in white supremacy context, you know, if you can identify, if you can identify a Nazi, you can get that Nazi fired. But ever since the president has officially made Antifa a domestic terrorist organization, any, any time or any way that you can be identified as any type of, uh, of, of enemy of the state, you're going to get, um, a different colored folder about, about you and your behaviors. And that will maybe not, it's the new, it's the new form of remember, um, K through 12, this is going to go on your permanent record. Well, this is at least in a, in a time of police state, which, you know, didn't start with Trump. Um, but definitely in a time of vindictive, I mean, we know that Trump is all the vindictive. And so if, so right now it's going to be very similar to, 
um, flushing grouse. I, I dare say that the government looks for opportunities to uh, flush their most um, their most passionate and uh, extremist society members out into the public um, to participate in a place where they can be photographed, probably uh, not only by um, sanctioned uh, reconnaissance and, you know, people who are in alphabet agencies taking, taking official photographs, um, but also photographs from helicopters. I heard that there were some drones over some areas. And, and then, of course, the panopticon known as social media. Um, one of the downsides of all this m mocking that a lot of um, Betty, Betsy's, Betty's and Karen's and so forth have been mocked over the fact that they're going to these um, protests and these protests, uh, peaceful protests, aggressive protests, silent protests, and all they're doing is using their selfies and making sure that everybody knows that they're there and using it as content for their uh, boring influencer media channels. All of these uh, channels are going to be uh, scrutinized by by pattern recognition engines, and they're going to be uh, put into private um, private databases like Clearview.ai, or they're going to be put into a, a Fort Meade. NSA database, and they're going to be uh, they're going to be slurped. In other words, uh, spidered, indexed, and so forth, slurped down like Clearview AI does, which is um, supposedly they have three or six billion open source, which means is a it's a spy term. Open source intelligence um, is any intelligence that can be gleaned outside of top secret. So open source intelligence is anything on Google or any types of LexisNexis, or can be found in any type of social media, or of course, in message boards and forums and chat rooms, etc. Anything that can be found in newspapers, local papers, um, etc. Anything that's available to you and me, uh, a really extremely savvy you and me. Um, with a budget for paywalls, that's the kind of stuff that's associated with open source intelligence. So in addition, in addition to the type of uh, old school um, video and photography from drones and helicopters and people on the ground, and obviously this is going to be taken from you know, from, uh, from cop cams, from chess cams, from whatever they're called. Um, and this is going to be indexed as well. And if you think that you can hide behind a N95 mask or, uh, or, or a bandana or a buff, you're wrong because there, the technology is a lot more advanced than, um, anybody wants to talk about. I mean, the British and the Chinese have, have mastered it. And, um, it's incredible what the state of the art was when I was, uh, in that space back in 2006. And so I can only imagine what leaps and bounds have come about. Uh, I just, and, and the, and the crush of, of social media since 2006, I can only Im imagine. Um, so there's not just, and, and the data points are not just, uh, requiring your eyes or your head um, and covering your face isn't going to help because I, I mean, I'm speculating, but I speculate that anybody's been incarcerated. Um, anybody who's been incarcerated also has a record of their gait, G A I T, which is to say how they move, how they walk. I guarantee you that anybody who's been in the system has a file on how they move. And so if a person's ever been in imprisoned um, for any length of time, obviously, if you were in the drunk tank overnight, but if you are, if the Panopticon, if the CCTV has any experience with you moving about, I guarantee you that there are metrics on that. Um, 
in addition to irises and and fingerprints and palm prints and DNA uh, and blood samples and so forth, there is also um, information about your biometrics that transcends merely the face required to unlock your iPhone in a nanosecond. Things such as body shape, head shape, the way the eyes react to each other, um, uh, gait and movement, um, etc. So just realize that sometimes uh, these, um, these events, these amazing events, these world-changing events are actually amazing opportunities for law enforcement um, from the FBI, through the NSA, through Homeland Security, also local police looking for outstanding warrants and people on parole. You know, if you're, if you're on parole, you're not allowed to do these kinds of things. You have to be straight and narrow. So if you're, if you're a black man or a black woman and you are on parole, it doesn't matter if you're fighting for civil rights and protesting civilly and quietly, you're possibly going to be brought in by your parole officer and brought back to jail, uh, having broken your parole. Um, if you are a, uh, if you are not an American, if you're not a documented American and you are out and about, um, there is a possibility that you can be uh, triangulated and deported. Um, so there's a real risk. The real risk is when you fight the law, the law wins unless it doesn't. So the only way that you can flush your permanent record is by getting control of the, of the, uh, uh, the handles of power and, that's not easy. It's going to take a lot of risk and a lot of, a lot of sacrifice and a lot more, a lot more deaths, and a lot more shootings, and a lot more uh, vehicular manslaughter, and a lot more unintended consequences, such as people dying from um, having asthma and being exposed to pepper spray or tear gas. It's just really going to get bad, but realize that the moment that you make it up, up, the moment you make any public declaration, even if you feel like you're doing it semi-anonymously, you are, in fact, putting yourself on a watch list, and you could, and it could possibly influence your hire ability, and it definitely will influence your ability to be hired as a government worker. I mean, don't even fool yourself on that. In fact, there are going to be a lot of firings from people who are identified. HR won't even tell you, and you're going to be asked to leave. And you know what? A lot of that might happen during the time of coronavirus. I mean, once people start returning to work, um, HR gets to be very discerning, quote unquote, i.e. sexist, racist, um, classist. They, they get to scrutinize you on everything. Oh, oh, even handicappedist or, or capabilityists or, or, uh, LBGT, LBGTQist. I mean, this is a time of reckoning when corporate America can, in fact, not hire you back for reasons that they couldn't fire you in advance. I'll go into another episode about that. I think that's really, this happened in 2008 and it's happening in 2020. And I think that they call this a reset and we won't go into that anymore. But anyway, thanks for listening. I recommend uh, finding the June 14th episode of uh, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. If you don't have um, HBO Go or HBO Now or HBO Max, you can find it readily on YouTube, the entire episode, or just the segment about uh, facial recognition. This is going to make everything that I'm talking about make much more sense. Thank you. Mahalo. Aloha. Aloha. 
Thank you very much for listening to Season 2, Episode, I Think, 6 of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. Thank you. Uh, subscribe, like, all that other fun stuff. Comment. It's 0809 on June 15th, and I'm very grateful that you were here. I hope that you... Oh, my... Um, you can find me on social media at Chris Abraham everywhere. You can also find me at chrisabraham.com. Uh, you can um, make you can uh, find me on YouTube at Chris Abraham on, on that channel. If you can find uh, and my email is chris at abraham.su c h r a s at a b r a h a m dot s u or c j a at well dot com. If you have any recommendations for topics should only take 8 to 15 minutes without me making any references or doing any show notes just off the top of my head. Um, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, thank you very much, and thanks for listening, and I hope you continue. Bye-bye.